So now let's talk about the second new theory, second new interpretation that arose in the 18th century, also in England, and was later transplanted into the United States. This second new interpretation is known as dispensationalism or dispensational theology. In contrast to post-millennialism, dispensationalism is alive today. Many fundamentalist Christians, many evangelical Christians profess dispensationalist theology. So it was much more successful than post-millennialism by influencing the minds of American Christians. The author of dispensationalism was an English theologian whose name was John Nelson Darby. John Nelson Darby lived in the 19th century and uh, he created his new interpretation uh, on the basis of his practical need. He wanted to study the Bible and teach the Bible, but the Bible is a collection of books. It's a library of books. And uh, it takes time for you to read the Bible, and uh, when you read book after book, you may be lost because of so much information is in there. So John Nelson Darby wanted to find some patterns according to which the Bible is structured. Not book by book, but pattern by pattern. And uh, he thought that he discovered this pattern, which he called dispensation. John Nelson Darby believed that uh, the substance of the biblical material can be divided into seven dispensations. A dispensation is a period of time which begins with God delivering revelation to humanity. According to Darby, each dispensation is characterized by four major features. The first one is revelation. Human beings receive revelation from God. And this revelation usually consists of commandments. People are told what not to do or what to do. Then, each dispensation, according to Darby, is associated with specific test, or specific commandment uh, that people should follow. They can either pass the test or fail. The third feature of each dispensation, according to Darby, is that humans always fail. That's nice to know. What, what, what was the question? Is that wrong? No, I said he's not wrong. No, he's not wrong. Yes, people suck. <laughs> that should be the foundation of your philosophy. And then the fourth necessary feature of each dispensation is that God punishes humans for their failure. So Darby thought that if you read the Bible, you will see that it is organized not according to the specific books, but according to, the, to this pattern of dispensations. And let us briefly uh, discuss the dispensations that Darby um, emphasized or outlined. The first dispensation is the dispensation of Adam, the very beginning of the Bible. Adam and Eve have revelation from God in the Garden of Eden. A specific test that is associated with uh, this situation in the Garden of Eden is not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Adam and Eve succumb to temptation. And as a result, they are punished. Well, actually, everybody is punished. Adam, Eve, the serpent. So that seems to follow the pattern. Then the second dispensation, Noah. Noah and his ark. So, uh, so the revelation to Noah was to save uh, his family and some animals. He did that. Uh, everybody else was flooded, was punished. 
So here we have a slightly different pattern. Actually, Noah did not fail. Everybody else failed, and they were punished. Then the third, the third dispensation, according to Darby, was the dispensation of Abraham, the pioneer of monotheism. Now, here I think the pattern uh, does not seem as good as in previous cases, because Abraham was the man of faith. He was tested many times. He passed all the tests. And as a result, he was not punished. He was rewarded. God told him that uh, his seed will be blessed. And his posterity will um, occupy the promised land. That he will be the father of the multitude. So uh, no punishment here because Abraham actually passes the test. So I guess this is another possible outcome of the situation. Then the next one. Number four, the dispensation of Moses. Here we have a very good illustration of what Darby meant. Moses brings the law. Moses tells his people that if they remain faithful and loyal to their God, then they will prosper. Uh, and uh, they will be independent, they will be wealthy, but if um, they do not follow the law, if they are not faithful, then they will be punished. So Moses basically outlines the uh, conditions of his dispensations, and um, when we look at the saga, historical saga of the Jewish people, we see that uh, Jews um, did not... Um, stay completely faithful to their religion, uh, at least according to biblical authors, and as a result they were punished and scattered throughout all nations. Then, dispensation number five. Uh, here we have another problem with Darby's theory. The dispensation of the Gentiles, non-Jews. Now, Darby didn't know where to place this period of human history, you know, between Jesus, uh, but already after Moses. So he distinguishes one particular dispensation, the dispensation of Gentiles. But when it comes to the dispensation of Gentiles, we have no revelation, no specific revelation, no specific law, no specific commandments. Um, and uh, therefore, I think here, uh, Darby's theory is on the shaky ground. However, when we come to the six and seven dispensation, that's we come, uh, then we come back uh, to, uh, the, to the pattern that Darby describes. So the sixth dispensation is the dispensation of Jesus. Here everything seems to um, fall into place. Jesus brings the new law. Jesus brings the new relationship with God those, for those who believe in him. But here comes an interesting feature of Darby's theory. According to Darby, each dispensation, maybe with the exception of Abraham, each dispensation is doomed to failure. People fail, and therefore they are punished. So, hence, according to Darby, Christianity will also fail. You know, post-millennialism believed that Christianity will actually succeed, and the Enlightenment is the beginning of the millennium. So, Christianity will be victorious. Darby, in his dispensationalist theory, thought just the opposite, that Christianity will not be victorious because Christians, like all other people before them, will fail. And therefore, uh, the best that we can do as Christians is to spread the word of God so that uh, more people will come to the faith of Jesus Christ. 
That's why evangelical Christians, that's why fundamentalist Christians are so active in recruiting new members. Because according to them, this is their best job. They cannot save Christianity. Christianity is doomed. However, you know, the more people they'll bring to salvation, the better it will be uh, to humanity in general. So here we come to the two words that you probably heard, uh, but you never knew that those terms, those words, belong to dispensationalism. Rapture and tribulation. Have you heard about rapture? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So what is rapture? And here we come to the seventh dispensation according to Darby's theory. At some point, Christianity will fail. And therefore, a human failure will result in punishment. Now, all those people who will remain faithful to Jesus will experience rapture. They will be raptured to heaven. And those who did not pass the test will remain here on earth to go through the period of tribulation. So rapture is for the righteous. Tribulation is for the sinners. And after the period of tribulation that dispensationalists connect with the beginning of the millennium that was described in chapter 20, you know, the war between the angel and the dragon, uh, we may think of it as a tribulation, a period of tribulation. After that, humans will see the rise of the seventh dispensation. And Darby associates the seventh dispensation with the millennium that was described in chapter 20. So here is another interesting aspect of dispensationalist theology. According to dispensationalism, the millennium will have nothing to do with Christianity. Each dispensation is different. The dispensation of Adam is different from Noah. Noah is different from Moses. Moses from Jesus. So the, the dispensation of the millennium will be different from the dispensation of Christ. It will not be Christianity as we know it. So overall, dispensationalism is socially pessimistic. It is optimistic only on an individual basis. You know, the more people you save, the better it is for them. But that's really the best you can do. <laughs>